You could imagine the quiet of the land before it was inhabited by our species. And see if you can have a felt sense of that quiet. The quiet that would be like a part of your inner nature before you are inhabited by your thoughts. And we could ask ourselves, how might returning to that sense of quiet with a respect and reverence, how might that benefit us in our personal ecology to return to the indwelling silence or stillness that precedes <laughs> the intrusion of your thoughts, the inhabitants of your thoughts, but also how might that support nature to heal if we were all to get quiet as Pablo Neruda said in one of his poems. If we were all to cease the useless activities he's referring to and come to some quiet, some peace amongst us to give quiet to the earth. Please begin your ujjayi breath. So there is a, like a thread, the subtle thread that reminds you where are you for your practice. And this ujjayi sound is like your biofeedback. How are things in the central channel?
Bring your hands together at your heart. We're going to start with the invocation for the first chakra. And I'm going to ask you to sing it in just three breath cycles. So the first two lines are one exhale. The middle line is an exhale. And the last two lines are also one exhale. So think of it like a little bit of pranayama with your chanting. Let's begin. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Savidyang Karavai Tejasvinda Varitamastu Mavidveshavai Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Savidyang Karavavai Tejasvinda Varitamastu Mavidveshavai Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Savidyang Karavavai Tejasvina Varitamastu Mavidveshavai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om With your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart. I'm going to check that I don't have original sound turned on and because I don't want to use it. It makes the sound come through funny. Just a moment. Okay, great. Okay, so from where you are currently sitting, please bring your feet into Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together like this. And reach down to hold the ankles and pull up through the spine. So press your knees out and down and be respectful about the shape of your hip joints. So if your knees don't reach the ground, like you saw with the great sages in their photographs, they reach the ground. Don't worry about it. They have different genetics than you do. So press the knees out and down, lift up through your spine and come back into the Ujjayi breath. So now you have a more taut kind of system and see what the ujjayi breath does here use the breath to return to that inner sense of quiet the quiet of your mind before it was populated by thoughts before it was colonized by habits, perceptions, misperceptions. And keeping the chest and heart open, please bend your elbows and start gliding your heart forward like you're doing more like cow pose, less like cat pose. See if you can bring the breath into the back hemisphere of the pelvic floor during your inhalation. And 
You could imagine that the sitting bones are gently widening apart on inhale. And then lift the tone of the exhale from the pubic bone to the perineum and then up the front of the abdomen. And then please rise back up to sitting. Use your inhalation. Rise up and open your chest, your heart, and your throat. Hold firmly onto your ankles. Press the knees out and the ankles down as you go up. Widen your collarbones and open your throat. And then exhale, come to upright. Now please support your heels so that you can come into malasana. So I think that I've said this enough times that most of you know, I don't have flexible ankles and I don't have any illusions that that's going to happen here in my like 30th year of yoga, uh, more than 30 years of yoga. So support your heels with what you need to come into a squat. Let's put the feet together and then the knees outside of the armpits just gently. Invite the torso to come down. Hopefully your hips are either not resting on anything or if they're touching something, it's just very lightly touching unless you're someone who needs the extra support for your pelvis right now. You can bow the torso and the heart down. It's a little bit like cat pose spine right now. And see if the inhale can make it into the back hemisphere of the pelvic floor. And are you able to consider moving your mind back and back until your awareness is there with the quietude that preceded your mind being populated by your thoughts. As you're in Malasana, begin to reach your arms forward towards the floor in front of you. You can put the palms to face each other. And then with an exhale, roll your knees to center, raise your heels up and come into the toe balance pose. And inhale, raise your arms up overhead. And exhale, roll back to Malasana. Inhale into the back hemisphere of the body. Exhale, glide forward to the toe balance pose. Pick your heels up off of the support. Shine your knees forward. Inhale, raise your arms up. And exhale, smoothly back down to Malasana. Again, inhale into the back of the body. And exhale, glide forward, toe balance pose. Inhale, raise up. And exhale. Now let's roll back towards Malasana, but put the knees together. Bring your blocks if you need them. So something like this, you may not need them, but press your hips up into Uttanasana, step your feet forward of your blanket or your cushions, whatever you're using under your heels and come into Uttanasana. So now the feet can be hip distance apart and you can put your hands on your blocks if you need or on the floor. And again, see if you can find the Ujjayi breath coming into the back hemisphere of the pelvic floor. And consider the possibility of resting in the part of your mind, this sort of awareness part, the witness mind, that isn't populated by your thoughts and gives you a gateway into your wise mind. Mm 
shift your hands to your hips, rise up to standing, take a wide stance, and please come down to Prasarata Padottanasana. Now again, we're going to ask if it's possible to sense the breath at the back hemisphere of the pelvic floor. And in this case, I would like us to have the blocks forward to raise the hands up on the two blocks for the purpose of opening the spine and the entire channel, the spine, the sacrum, but also the central channel of the chakras. So put your blocks ahead of you. Press your fingers lightly down on the blocks. Energize your legs firmly. And see if the inhale can have this the graceful contact with the back hemisphere of the pelvic floor, the back hemisphere of your body. And then exhale from the front hemisphere of the pelvic floor to the perineum. And then up the front of the sacrum, up the front of the spine. The perineum is the center of the pelvic floor. Now, keeping your hips level where they are, bring your left hand down underneath your left shoulder, keep the right hand where it is, and gently start twisting to your right. So press down with your right hand and your left hand, and as you're rotating your spine to the right, keep the sitting bones, tailbone, pubic bones stable. And imagine that you're rotating kind of up like a barber pole, or like the gladiole is blooming from the bottom up. Now with your next inhale, press into your left hand firmly, begin straightening your left arm, raise your torso, stretch your right arm forward in this twist to the right. And then exhale, return down to both hands being on the blocks. Place your right hand beneath your right shoulder. Keep the, keep the elbow bent and in line with your wrist and your shoulder. Start twisting to your left. So it's like a low lying twist right now. And as you're twisting, keep your legs stable, the sitting bones, the pubic bones stable. And imagine the gladiola blooming from the bottom up. Now, keeping the left arm stretched out as you next inhale, press into your right palm, strengthen your right arm and straighten it. Rise up to a, a little higher twist with the left arm reaching forward. Keeping the pelvis stable here, use your next exhale to bring your left hand back down to its block, right hand to its block. And then walk your hands back somewhere beneath your shoulders. Turn your right toes just very slightly out and deeply bend your right knee. Now, as you come across, when you bend your right knee, sometimes we have the inclination to move both of the hands over to the right, which is a fine inclination. But let's see if we can do this this morning. Place your left hand firmly, whether that's on the floor or on a block, and take the right hand to hold the left wrist. And then bend your right knee and come down to the side so you have these anchors with your left foot and your left hand. You're also causing the rib cage to twist a little bit to your left and your pelvis is going down to the right. Breathe in and activate your right heel, right outer hip. See if the right hemisphere of the pelvic floor can feel more supported. 
and then exhale, rise up to center, place your right palm down, turn the left toes out, check that you can bend your knee comfortably, you know where you're going, and then take your left hand across to hold your right wrist and come down to your left. Press into your left outer heel. Energize your outer left hip and see if that influences some tone in the left hemisphere of the pelvic floor. It's not that the right hemisphere has no tone. It's that we want to make sure that we're not lax at the left hip. And then exhale, rise back up to center. Let's place the hands to the hips and inhale, rise up to standing. Let's go heel toe, heel toe, heel toe in, 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 and then take a seat on your blankets or your cushions, but not on your pet. Do not sit on your pets, <laughs> unless you have permission. Bring your hands down into the mudra for the first chakra like so. And bring your attention down to the pelvic floor. The word here is LAM, L-A-M. LAM, 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 LAM. Lum, 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 lum. 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 Invite your mind to rest in the inner quiet, that preceded thought. The inner quiet of awareness itself. We're going to move upwards towards the second chakra. So here, I'd like you to put a blanket for your knees. I'll use my little cushions, which is what I have. And let's put the left knee 
on the cushion or the blanket and the right foot forward and bring your blocks into view please so left knee right foot two blocks come up to proposal pose that means that your left thigh is vertical and your right shin is more or less vertical here we go i'll change the angle on the camera here just a little bit This camera is closer to me because of the dynamics of where I'm placing my mat. So you won't have a perfect view today and at any point. You won't get both the upper and the lower all consistently at the same time. So root the tailbone, lift the pubic bone up. Breathe into the left hip flexors here. Now with an inhale, Turn your palms face out, thumbs out, and raise your arms up overhead. And at the upper part of the pose, let the heart, the throat, and the gaze go up. So the gladiola, for example, has a long stem before it has the blooms. And then the blooms begin from the bottom up. So keep the lower part of your pelvis and legs really stable. And go upwards like blooming. Now we're going to exhale, take the arms wide and start gliding forward until your right knee is over your right toes, but the right heel is still anchored. Bring your hands down to the blocks, lift your chest and your heart up. Feel into your left hip flexors, open the throat like you're doing cow pose. Curl the left toes under. And exhale, glide back, Parsvottanasana, place your hands firmly on blocks, draw your torso towards your right leg. And then inhale, think of it like water undulating, bring the left knee down, come forward, raise your chest and your heart, open your throat. Exhale, glide back. So if possible, it is one breath cycle for these movements. Here's the completion of your exhale the beginning of the inhale. So it's a long breath in, open your chest, your heart and your throat. Do it three times more. Follow the pace that is actually your breath cycle. So it may not be as long as mine. And of course, I'm also speaking. without any sense of breathlessness, follow the pace that is respectfully yours. We're gonna to return to Anjaneyasana together. And then exhale and back up to proposal pose. You, you back the pelvis up so that you're over your left knee. The left thigh is vertical again. And then step your right foot back and your left foot forward. Proposal pose. You take the tailbone down, lift the pubic bone up. Turn your palms face out. Inhale to go up. So we're starting in this distance here for proposal pose because I think it, it gives us a chance to feel what happens when your knee goes past your heel for Anjane Asana. So that's going to be ankle flexibility, but also foot stability. So inhale to reach up. And then exhale, begin to glide forward so that your left knee comes over the line of your toes. You can peek down at it if necessary. The left heel should remain grounded. Press into your fingertips and move the spine like you're doing cow pose. Feel into your right hip flexors. Okay, let's begin with the next exhale, undulate backwards. Let the torso come over your left leg like a water cascade. Inhale forward, raise your heart, 
your throat and your gaze like a fountain of water. And continue. We'll do it about five times all together. And of course, at your pace. So there's no sense of breathlessness required. And the question may be how you can have a similar or consistent quantity of air, the quantity, but perhaps a little bit slower. Moving the air more slowly is something that you can develop in time with practice. It's a very powerful practice, actually. But it cannot be attained with coercion. In the same way, we don't actively try to coerce the senses, but we do try to steward or chaperone our senses. One more time back to Parsvottanasana. And then step your right foot forward to meet your left foot. Uttanasana. Place the feet to their hip distance apart. And when you inhale, rise up to your fingertips, bring your heart forward, slide the pubic bone back. And then exhale for a deep bow to your legs. Let's do that again. When you inhale to glide forward, send the pubic bone back. And vertebrae by vertebrae, rise forward like a gladiola blooming one blossom at a time. And then we exhale to bow towards the legs. Notice the tone that comes into the deep inner abdomen. Last one. Place your hands on your hips. Rise up to standing. Now from where you are, take your, keep your right foot where it is and put your left foot around behind your right foot. So you've crossed the ankles like this. So my right foot is in front, left foot is behind. And then come back down to Uttanasana. Make the primary foot your right one, please. Now, keeping some measure of stability, press into your left hand, right hand. Notice how that influences the sides of the belly. If you press the left hand down, if you press the right hand down, if you alternate them, you may feel the abdomen have a kind of a crisscross pattern there. Now press down firmly into your left hand and straighten the left arm, twist to your right. Keep the right heel grounded. And exhale, come back down. Now see if you can switch the feet. So you've got your right foot, bring the left foot forward and the right foot around the left foot and come down to Uttanasana. Keeping the left foot grounded, try it again just to press into your right hand, which side of the belly lights up, press into your left hand. How does the belly pass the responsibility back and forth? And press down firmly into your right hand and twist to your left. Notice the stability that you have to create from your feet up into your hips and pelvis. And then exhale, enjoy the mobility like water coming back down. Press into your left foot and bring your right foot around next to your left foot. Bring your hands to your hips, please, and rise up to standing. 
Now come down to your knees facing forward. Come up onto your high knees like this and put your right foot out to the right and take it straight out. This is called gate pose or parigasana. And in gate pose, I know not everyone's foot gets flat to the floor, so you can have the, the heel up, be stable please and not painful. Or you can put something under the toes for stability there. Okay. Inhale the arms wide. And exhale side bend to your right. Take your block please through your right hand and reach your left arm past your face. Good, so let's keep the left thigh stable. Tone your left outer hip. So your pelvis is not gonna do the hula or the belly dance to the left right now. Keep the left outer hip strong as if that was one of the river banks for the river, the water element at the second chakra. And then exhale, bend your right knee, glide over your right thigh. Inhale, straighten your right leg. Exhale, bend your right knee. And do take your time so it's again on your breath cycle. Move with respect for your body, your breath your yoga. One more time, return to gate pose. Tone the left outer hip. Exhale, rise up. Release both arms. Step your right foot in. Take the left foot out. Don't step on the wildlife. <laughs> a ladybug. A ladybug. The wildlife is a ladybug. Right there. Hi. Okay, sweep the arms wide. And exhale down to your left. Place your fingers or your palm firmly on the block and bring your right arm past your face. Tone your right outer hip. Make the entire right thigh strong like a stem, you know, like the stem of the gladiola. It has to be strong enough to hold those tall flowers on a pretty thin stem. Yeah, let's breathe in and then follow your exhale. Follow your breath cycle now. Inhale to straighten your left leg, tone the right outer hip. Exhale to bend. Inhale to glide. Full respect for your body, your breath, your practice, each other, the tradition, the land that you are inhabiting on which you are practicing. Let's exhale, rise up. Release your left knee back to the blanket or the cushion. Oh, sorry, ladybug. And please take a seat for a moment. Okay, two moments, three moments. Bring your hands down to the second chakra like this. The word is WAM, spelled V-A-M. Wum, 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 wum.
Let your mind return to the quietude that was there before thought and is still available through awareness itself. We're going to move up to explore the third and the fourth chakra together. So please cross your ankles. This is called Sukhasana. Cross your ankles. I have to get my cushions organized. So when you cross, it's more narrow like this relative to Siddhasana. The knees are wider apart. And having it be more narrow, you're going to have a different reach across like this. So if you'll take the back of your left hand, please, around the outside of your right thigh and aim to bring your fingers down to touch the floor. You have to have already a side shift, a forward bend, and a little bit of rotation. For those who are able to, it's sort of interesting to hold on to your own toes right there, if you can reach them. They're right under there. Okay, yeah, I hope you can see that. So the palms facing out that way. Okay, take the right hand to the block. You can put it up tall if you'd like and then press into your right hand and make this twist. We went into a forward bend to get our position, but now I'd like you to try to draw up from that forward bend to twist and rise up towards your heart. If your fingers are on the floor, keep them relatively firmly fixed there, your left fingers. If they're around your right toe, keep them firmly fixed there. Rotate up to the right, and then raise your right arm up past your right ear. So this is a complex pose. You have a stable base at the pelvis. You have a, a firm grasp, we hope, where your fingers and your toes or fingers on the floor are. And then there's this twist at the third chakra while rising up and rotating open into the heart. Let's inhale, open and twist to your right. 
Lower your right arm down behind you. Reach for your block if that helps you to have a support behind your pose. And then exhale, come around to center. And just watch when you come back to center, watch inside this kind of recalibration that's going on. If we were to divide the torso in half and into portions, you would have like a lower, middle, upper. So those six regions are right now recalibrating the internal pressure in your body. Change the cross of your ankles, please. And then take the back of your right hand around to the outside of your left thigh. If possible, bring your fingers down to the floor. If enjoyable, bring your fingers to hold the right big toe. Okay, and then take the block under your left hand. I like to make it tall because while we went to a forward bend to get here, we're gonna go up to a back bendy twist. But one of the challenges we face at the third chakra is becoming overly willful including with our own bodies and our practice. So bring in an elegant kind of effort here. As you root both hips and firmly hold your fingers, your right hand fingers in place, rotate up through the left upper chest, raise your left arm past your ear. You might be able to sense those six portions of the torso. I can't call them quadrants because that's with the number four, but let's say six. So lower, middle, upper, and right to left. And then inhale, rise up to your seat, rotate open to your left for a twist that's more vertical and upright. Yeah. And then exhale and come around to center. And again, notice the uh, recalibration of the pressure system inside of you. Now place both legs in the Z formation going to your right. That means that you are sitting like this. So right leg left knee like this. Okay, so in this particular seat, since I'm facing the way I'm facing, let me just give a little moment here. My hat will fall off, so I'll take it off. We're going to be going backwards into a little back bend pose. It follows a twist. So here's the twist. I've got my right hand on my block behind me on top of a stone pathway on top of the clover. So I'm watching out because the bees will enjoy the clover too. There we go. So when that happens, when you're back there like that, then you're going to raise up with both hips. It's going to become a back bend, a little bit like camel pose, right? So we start in the twist and then we go to this back bend. I used to playfully call this back then the ice skater pose because I pictured the ice skaters on the ice at the end of their routines, the female ice skater with the back bend and the flowing skirt and the ponytail like that. So we're gonna do the ice skater pose here on a hot day in the summer at Brighton Bush. Take your right hand behind you, walk the left hand, use the back of your hand to the outside of your right thigh and twist and look over your right shoulder. Keeping this wise effort in your awareness, start raising your left arm up alongside your face. And press firmly into your right hand, roll your right shoulder back, raise your hips forward and up. And if the heart is open and the neck feels supportive of it, start raising your gaze towards the sky or the ceiling. 
Keep the right arm and both legs firmly supporting this. And then begin taking your gaze down past the right shoulder, left arm across your face. Return to the seat of your twist. And then come around and we're gonna change sides. Hi, little guy. Where are you going? Well, can you go together? There's no exit there. Yeah, thank you. No, go back that way. You can't get through here. I'll just help you to make it a quicker return. There you go. I'm sorry, I'm blocking your pathway. Your cousins live over there? Hi. Here, let's take a little trip together. Okay, there you go. Okay. Bye. Have fun. Okay, <laughs> take the back of your right hand, please, around the outside of your left thigh. Left hand behind you. So this is where your twist is really targeting the third chakra. And important to have a kind of wisdom in that third chakra twist. We don't want it to feel like you're flaring your rib cage forward. That would be a little excessive, would over squeeze the adrenals, which are on the back side of your floating ribs there. And it makes it difficult to transition from the third up to the fourth chakra. So we don't recommend pushing the floating ribs forward. Start strengthening your left hand, left arm, left shoulder. And as you inhale, raise your right arm up alongside your right ear. And then begin pressing down with both shins, press into your left hand, left shoulder rolls back. As you come up to the twist, you are like a gladiola blooming. If your heart, shoulders, and your throat support it, gaze up. And then exhale, glide your right arm past your face, return your hips down and come into your twist once again to your left. And then rotate around to face forward and unhook your right foot from the Z position. Now we're gonna include the hands, arms, and shoulders moving from the third to the fourth. This is all gonna be up into the throat, so this whole region right through here. So I'd like you to kneel. I'm gonna face away from the sun. And you can be near the back side of your mat. I will recommend, let's see, do I need padding for this? I don't think so. Uh, you might want padding. It'll be up to you. I'll just put one layer of padding so in case some whimsical thing overcomes me, I won't have to reach for it. Okay, so we're kneeling, and when you do this with your hands, you're gonna be putting your hands on the small of the back, the fingers pointing up. So I have to do it like this. I place my fingers with my left hand, I placed my right hand. Okay, so go ahead and set yourself up right there. Roll the right shoulder back, the right elbow back, lift up with your heart here, but keep the floating ribs in through here, not flaring forward. As you roll the right shoulder back, put your left hand on the outside of your right thigh, palm face down this time, and look over your left shoulder. So really roll the left shoulder back, uh, excuse me, right shoulder back. I know it might be uncomfortable for your fingers or your wrist. Roll the elbow back. Rotate your upper right chest to the right, your throat and your head to the left. Firmly hold your right outer thigh so you've got this long line through your left arm and shoulder. Okay, rotate back around to face forward, palms face down in your lap. Now take the left hand and place it. You might have to use your right fingers, which is what I'm doing. So you place your fingers pointing up on the small of your back. 
Roll your right shoulder back. I'm sorry, left shoulder back. I'm not marrying you. I have to remind myself. And as you roll it back, lift the upper left chest and shoulder. Take your right hand across to hold your left thigh. And start turning your head to the right as far as you can. So there is a twist in the upper thoracic spine to your left and your cervical spine to the right. And then exhale to release from there. Notice your body recalibrating. Now check that you could put your hands behind you on the floor like this, fingers pointing forward, knuckles, heels of the hands, and then the chest, heart, and throat. Okay, so breathing in. Now press into your fingerprints. Inhale, rise up, gaze forward, raise your arms. Palms together like an arrow. Exhale, bow forward. In the arrow position, you've got the sides of your pinkies on the floor, and then you've got the sides of the hands on the floor. Inhale, come forward to cow pose on the elbows. Exhale, reach back, child's pose, pranam. Press into your fingers, lift the sides of the heels of the hands. Inhale, rise up like an arrow. Exhale, open, place your hands, fingers behind you, knuckles, palms. Inhale, enjoy the stretch of the front body. Exhale, tone the low belly. Okay, inhale, fingerprints. Raise your heart, your shoulders, your arms. Make an arrow. Exhale, bow forward. Reach as far out as you're able to without falling forward, of course. Inhale, elbows down, chest and heart forward. Exhale, reach back, press the sides of the pinkies down, lift the sides of your wrists up. And then inhale, rise up. And exhale, open one more time. And now exhale, return to Vajrasana. Place your hands in the mudra for the third chakra. Ram, 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 ram. 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 Ram, 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 ram.
Come to your seat for the fourth chakra. Right hand at the heart. Left hand out on the knee. Yum, 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 yum. 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 Fifth chakra, lace the fingers like a zipper. Touch the thumbs. The sound is hum. Hum, 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 hum. Be at ease. Listen for the quiet that preceded thought. the silence that still lies beneath thoughts. We're going to take this quiet with us down to bridge pose and fish pose as our finishing poses. They both highlight the fifth chakra very nicely. So lie on your back, please, and have your two blocks close enough by that you'll be able to reach for them.
Place your feet to their hip distance apart. Raise your hips and foot either one block flat, two blocks flat, one block medium, or one block tall. It's based on your body proportions, your preference, your personal practice. But as you're making those choices, make the choice based on wisdom in action, which is an important phrase for the third chakra. May there be wisdom in action, not just action. <laughs> not just action, please. Wisdom in action. Okay, tuck the shoulders under. Then you could hold a yoga strap between your hands for firmness. You could hold the sides of the mat with your hands. You kind of make it into a little rope on the right and the left between your knuckles and your thumbs. Or you could hold the ankles if your arms are long enough. Firmly establish your shoulders and the lift of your heart. The chin comes in towards the throat, so there's an openness at the back of the throat. And press into your heels and start raising your pelvis up off of the two blocks so it becomes from supported to active bridge pose. And then touch your hips back to the two blocks. Keep the shoulders strong. Bring your right knee up, left knee up, legs up, so long as your hamstrings are not a bother for you there. If the hamstrings are a consideration, try this with your knees a little bit bent or more bent, but your feet higher than your knees. It's a circulation process. And bend the knees, place your feet back to the floor. Raise your hips and put the two blocks aside. Lower your hips down. Okay, so I'm going to give a little instruction how to get into fish pose. I guess you can see. You see what you see. I'm doing my best. The words will be more important than you seeing. Okay, so in fish pose, the palms are going to be face down underneath the body. You'll be sitting on the back of your wrists and forearms when you get started. So roll to your left a little bit and place the right forearm under the right hip. And then do the same on the left side so that your thumbs, hopefully, are touching and they're interlaced and your fingers go flat down to the floor. So you scooch the elbows under and the shoulders back. And you're sitting on the back of your forearms. Take the legs out straight and press each leg firmly down, including the heels and your sitting bones all the way. Then press into your palms, the heels of your hands, your wrists, your elbows, and raise your chest up, heart up to fish pose. Look backwards and bring the top of your head to the floor. If it touches within reason, you could put a blanket there to raise the floor if you need to. And then exhale and slide down to the back of your head. 
Release your hands and come to Shavasana. Invite your body to rest really completely. This is where I like to recommend we rely on the medicine of the practice to go inside and be our, our like a apothecary and our medicinary, or our priest or shaman, whatever you want to imagine that inside the methods of yoga, the tools of yoga are now taking care of you. Allow your body to rest really deeply, very completely.
<laughs> Invite your mind and your body to both be very still. The integration from your practice is still occurring. Stay present there. Please make a thoughtful transition back to a seat that we can share for a few minutes of meditation. Listen again for the quiet of the mind that preceded thoughts, and the quiet of the land that preceded over inhabiting.
Please raise your hands up to your heart. Om Namo Gurudev Namo Thank you everyone for being here. Namaste.